Hey everyone and welcome to 1.21 Gigawatts, I am Peter, that is Connor and this is our weekly news show, our movie news show in which we work through movie news. We have a comic book movie section, a horror movie section, a more general movie section, we talk about the weekend's box office, we do all that stuff um, and at the end of the show if we've watched any movies for non-review purposes, just casually, we might bring those up as well. I know Connor has one at least, I think. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to tell you to do the review, so... <sighs> It's an anime, though. Come on now. Don't, yeah, don't... but no, no, no. That 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 is not a, a hard cut off. Be you know it. realistic. You will enjoy this movie. I, I I would I would stake my reputation on that. All right. Maybe, since I know you're too busy to do anything on Tuesday, maybe I'll watch it on Tuesday. But I'm not making promises. Um, right. So yeah, we talk about movies and movie news and stuff. And sometimes we run all along. Sometimes we don't. I don't know. It, it, it varies. It varies. Sometimes we tangent wildly. Um, I don't know what to promise you. There's nothing. It's it's too wild. There's, there's there's no no set rules for this show, is there? No rules. No regulations. Just chaos. Still structured though, for whatever reason. Well, I've got to have a structure. What the hell, what would I do with no structure? I would just be I'd just pick stories at random and just go. Oh, I'll have that one and do well, that. Well, if you want, if you want true chaos, yeah, that's exactly what you do. No, I'm fighting against your ginger chaos nature and trying to have some order in, in this show. So we always start with the box office for for the weekend because uh, we record so this, this time. We're going to shake it up and do something else. No, we're going to do box office as oh, always. Yeah, so we record on Sundays after the estimates for the weekend go out, so we can do, we can have some d- decent results out of it. And we did we do usually predict a couple of movies for the following weekend. We actually re- re- predicted four different movies last week. We predicted the second weekend of Mission Impossible Fallout. We predicted The Darkest Minds, um, Christopher Robin, and The Spy Who Dumped Me. We we made guesses for all four of those movies. So we're going to see where we landed. Uh, do you happen to have a guess as to what number one is? Um, or do I tell you what you it, guessed number one was from last week's guesses? <laughs> yeah, tell me what I guessed, because I right. don't remember any of that. Uh, you had Christopher Robin at number one, uh, with 38 million. I'm going to stick with that number one. It's that I think it's that or Mission Impossible, but I, I'm going to stick with that. Um, worth mentioning, I also guessed Christopher Robin, I guessed 43 million. Uh, we were both wrong in the amounts and definitely on the ranking because Mission Impossible Fallout uh, was number one for a second week in a row. Uh, you guessed 24 million for that, I guessed 35. Uh, I want points because it's exactly 35 million at the time of recording. Yeah, actually, okay. yeah. So I'll, I'll, as much as I got the wrong number one, I'm I'm happy with that. that that's, that's good. Yeah. I feel, that feels more impressive to me that I nailed the number. <laughs> on the bright side, it means I'm definitely winning on Christopher Robin. Uh, yeah, because it has to be lower. You're right. You're yeah. right. Uh, that got that was number two with twenty five million, almost exactly. Because, but right, I mean, obviously it's the estimate, so it'll vary a little bit once the 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 actuals come in the next couple of days. But uh, Mission Impossible is at exactly thirty five million. Christopher Robin's at twenty five million and three thousand. So they're both pretty close to the the uh, the round figure there. Uh, but yeah, so that was twenty five million. So yeah, you were definitely closer with that. Although we're both far too high. Um, yeah. And do you know what annoys me is I think you talked me into going up up in that one. I think I did, yeah. I I, I was feeling something lower, and you talked me out of it. So I'm I'm to, annoyed at you now. To be fair, I talked you higher on Mamma Mia, and you won on that, right? So you win some, you lose some. This is the ginger chaos coming back into play here. No rhyme or reason. Yeah. Uh, number three was a spy who dumped me. You guessed fifteen million. I guessed fourteen million. Okay, we went pretty close on that. Yeah, uh, and we weren't too far off. It was twelve point three million, so I won that just because yeah, I was lower. Um, but yeah, so twelve point three million. Uh, number four was Mamma Mia. Here we go again with nine point or just nine million really. And then number five was the Equalizer Two with eight point eight million. Number six was Hotel Transylvania Three Summer Vacation with eight point two million. Number seven was Ant Man and the Wasp with six point one million. Number eight was The Darkest Minds. Now, you oh, guessed... I'm so glad I said this was going to bomb. <laughs> you guessed 13 million. You Way you, too high. You, you guessed... If, if it had gotten 13 million, it would be number three. It would be higher than Spy Who Dumped Me, if, if your guess was right yeah, there. Yeah. My guess was 7 million. What it actually came in at was 5.8 million. So I'm not too... I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not feeling too bad about that. I, I'll take yeah. that. Uh, I mean, at least at least I had it in the correct order with Spy Who Dumped Me. 
sure. Well, so did I, but sure. Yeah, but I'll, I'll take something. I mean, I got number one wrong, but the, the other three I got really close to the figures, so I'm I'm pretty chuffed with my predictions, yeah, actually. Yeah, you had a pretty there. good week. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't bad. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, so, so that's cool. And then number nine was Incredibles 2 with 5 million, almost exactly. And then number 10 was Teen Titans Go to the Movies with 4.8 million in its second weekend. So that ain't doing too hot. I only got like 10 last week, I think, if I remember right. So yeah, it's not, well, it wasn't good, was it? No, no. Uh, it's a shame. So, so there's bombs all around. Um, and just out of curiosity, what's Mission Impossible at worldwide? I feel like that's the interesting one to look at. Is that 329 million at the time of recording, which I believe is is tracking higher than any of the previous entries. So it's doing well. They're quite happy with that. Yeah, no, I can see why. I imagine it'll probably break 500, and maybe a little yeah. bit more. So yeah, there you go. And I'm hearing good things about it. I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking it out at some point. Um, but hey, so we do want to make some predictions for next week, um, and we had we've got two new releases worth guessing, I think, uh, and that is Slenderman and the Meg. So the Meg is the giant shark movie starring Jason Statham. For anyone who's uh, not keeping up to date with that news, and then obviously Slenderman's the horror movie based on the the uh, was it Creepy Pasta that started as, or was that just, or, or was that its own sure. urban legend that kind of spiralled out into I mean, it might have been its own thing I'm, yeah. I'm not sure I don't really give a shit about Slenderman yeah of course it led to actual kids doing really dark things in the real life because they believed it so you know there's actually some real life like creepiness to add to it now but yeah but uh yeah so Slenderman's interesting because it was meant to launch later in the month but the dish, the, the, the studio that were the, the production company weren't happy with Sony's marketing for it and tried to sh- shift to a different distributor. They failed in doing that, so Sony are still distributing it and decided to just put it out the same day as the Meg. They pushed, they moved it, they pushed it forward to a day with competition, just to be vindictive. Sony aren't the ones behind the Meg as well, are they? Uh, I don't know. Wait, I'll check. That feels like that, like something they could have done. Just no, just no, to that's, really that's, that's, spite them. Warner Brothers are behind the Meg. Okay. Uh, Black Klansman's also out, but I don't. I think. I think. I don't think that's worth guessing because that's obviously a smaller release. Yeah. yeah. Uh, comparatively, uh, although the, the trail looked interesting, admittedly. Uh, but yeah, so the Megan Slender Man. That is what we're guessing. So let me put a wee, wee note down here. Mm, okay. So these are weird because I, I don't see either of them doing amazingly. I really don't. Nah. Nah. I'll be ballsy. I'm going to say nine million for Slenderman. That's ballsy. I, I... Six point five. So we've got decimals on this. All right. Six point five. I feel like when I'm below ten, I, I feel like yeah, hmm? decimals are acceptable, right? The Mega think will do better, but not. I agree. Not but, huge though. Maybe not like. Fourteen. Good thing. Fourteen. I'll be a little bit more optimistic. I think I'm going to go with nineteen. There's a, there's a, actually a little bit more optimistic. It's not much, is it? Ah, I, I think it'll do. Find for what they're probably expecting with a dumb movie called The Meg. Yeah. Okay. And I say that as someone who who won't, wouldn't mind seeing it. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Uh, you know, I like dumb shark movies. It's fine, uh, but okay. So as I guess, so that's the box office. We will move on to actual news, and we'll start with the comic book stuff as we typically do. Uh, Matt Reeves was speaking this week at the TCAs uh, about the state of Batman or the Batman, as uh, the the official title reads. Because, because no one has a damn clue what's happening with that movie anymore. I still, I, I honestly feel like the title will change before it comes out. I think this is just a placeholder. Oh, almost older. certainly. Yeah. yeah. Even though I like the Batman as a title, uh, so he's just saying things are progressing. The, dra- the 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 draft of the script will be in a couple of weeks. He's, he was leaving that that event to go and write. Like that was that's what he's doing right now. Is writing the script. Um, uh, th- I thought what, what I thought was the interesting part of this though is that he was asked about the rumors that we had like last week or two weeks ago about it being based on Year One, and he basically waved that off as ridiculous. Um, he lo- he loves that story. But he's got no interest in doing an origin story, which is good because we basically all said the same thing <laughs> when that rumor came out. Yeah, I think something we didn't actually mention at the time is why would they be doing an origin story with Affleck? Hmm. 
Well, I think Assu- assuming Affleck is still in his. Well, it's funny you say that because up until now, everyone's been assuming he's not involved. But Reeves did say this week that he is still involved in some capacity. I don't see him starring in it, but we'll see. That's the thing. It's been so back and forth, right? You know, oh, he's not starring. Then he's like, no, I'm definitely in it. Oh, but, but oh, and then we got again, like you know, maybe a month or two ago. Oh, he's he's not in it. So I, I just don't know anymore. Honestly, I hope he doesn't. I hope we just start fresh. Go somewhere else. He's yeah. not, he's not terrible. Like I mean, I, I don't blame him for the script or the direction of those movies, but I just want a fresh start. I just I just want to get away from that. Yeah, no, I can't argue there's with not, it. There's not a lot, at least because obviously Wonder Woman is still connected to those awful movies. But she's had a good movie. She has a lot of like positive cred with her, and she was also yeah. arguably one of the best parts of Justice League. So. I would say, you know, no, no, keep her because we like her a lot, but yeah. Just... Yeah, the question is at this point, do you just recast and still just say it's Bruce? Do you do you go, okay, no, we're going to do... I'm pretty sure know, it's still Bruce no matter what. Batman. Yeah, no, I am as well, but... <laughs> so that's a little disappointing. Oh, were you hoping for a Dick Grayson Batman movie? Is that what you're hoping for? I mean, I feel like that's the thing that, like, if, if, you got, if you've got this and you're insistent on this being part of the universe, which... As far as I know, this one is part of the universe. Up until now, that's or, what I've heard. But I mean, it, it was, yeah. Maybe, maybe things have changed. Uh, now given, that they're given, officially not doing universe movies. Yeah, given that they're doing this Joker movie, which they're saying will be part of a different branding as a out of continuity. I mean, I'll just call it Elseworlds. Do, do, do use the comic term, please. Just do it. Yeah, they won't, yeah. but just do it. Um, uh, I I could see it. I could see some things that we think are going to be in continuity. Then like, oh by the way, this is this is an Elseworlds movie. It's not part of the, the story. And, and vice and versa. That's fine. If they tell me it's that, then sure. Do do Bruce recast. Do whatever you want. If you're gonna tell me it's still in continuity, all that stuff in you know BVS and Justice League happened. Just give me Dick. Give me the replacement. Connor wants Dick. You heard it here first, folks. So, so yeah yeah i mean uh he's mentioned that he's uh it's a really emotional story it's going to be you know uh de- you know definitely batman definitely emotional and him being the world's greatest detective uh he said that it'll be some sort of grand detective case which will you know spiral into gotham and that he's been reading a lot of comics as research for his script but he refused to say what any of those stories were, which I get. He doesn't want people guessing what the story is going to be yeah, based yeah. on the comics no, he's it's, read. It's it's because he's it's because he's using Tim Drake. <laughs> Keep dreaming. I know. I know. Keep dreaming. It's never gonna happen. Joe, you know I love I love that we're hearing about Cassandra Cain being in a movie before Tim Drake's even sniffing it. Screw you. Joe, you know Tim Drake's always going to be one who's skipped, and I'll tell you why. Dick's the main one who everyone thinks of because he's the first Robin, and Nightwing's cool. Damien's the son and has that personal connection and he's so different from the others that it makes sense to do stories about Damien in movies. Jason Todd, as much as we don't like him, Red Hood is kind of a mind for story potential. And the idea that we can get we get to have a Joker kill a Robin on screen, therefore you do Jason Todd. Tim, as far as movies goes, is the one that I can see being just sort of passed by the most. No, it's true, because Tim's role is he's actually the closest to Bruce, right? Mm -hmm. He's actually the one that's most like, or, you know, the the most like him and the most worthy successor to to the the Bat mantle. uh, Specifically, you know, especially in regards to being a detective. Yes. But from a movie perspective, it means your character's probably too similar and you want to do something different. Mm -hmm. uh, I get it. It, 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 As much as it hurts. So, yeah. I um, mean, just on side note of that, I mean, I'll just mention briefly that Mark Maron, I don't even have this written down, but Mark Maron's in talks to Star the Joker movie as well. You know, the, the, the Walking Phoenix I, I one. I think he confirmed the other day that he is in it. Oh, did he actually confirm it? Yeah, um, I think they confirmed that. And uh, what was the casting we had last week? De Niro. Yeah, that was confirmed as well. That was confirmed as well. Cool. Uh, more interestingly, though, they announced this week that an animated DC Super Pets film is in development at Warner Brothers Animation. Um, screenwriter Jared Stern who worked on the Lego Batman movie and the Lego Ninjago movie has been hired to both write and direct the film and uh, yeah, there's no word in the actual roster of the Super Pets movie but typically you're looking at Crypto the Super Dog, Streaky the Super Cat 
Beppo the Super Monkey, uh, Comet the Super Horse. I imagine this would probably have some representation from elsewhere as well. I'm expecting a Bat Dog. I'm expecting Titus or something there. Yeah, m- maybe even Bat Cow is a bit of a joke. Bit of a joke. Um, Wonder Woman's Kangaroo wouldn't go amiss if they wanted to throw that in. Mm. Um, mm. Was it Jumper? That's the name of it. Jumper, I remembered. Yeah. Um, uh, Plastic Man's Bird. <laughs> yeah. I'm down for this. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I get it. I get, I get doing this. Um, obviously, we're not expecting anything that's connected to anything. This will just be an animated movie with talking animals, and that'll be cool. That'll be fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. And we can add Streaky the Super Cat as characters getting movies before Tim Drake. <laughs> God, that hurts. No, it doesn't. Streaky's important. Streaky's the best. Oh, Streaky can burn. Streaky, streaky can't burn. Super cat, Kryptonian. Yeah, yeah, crypto can burn it. <laughs> Probably. Streaky will be fine. Streaky's got that Kryptonian cells. He's he's good. Super cat. Yeah. Um. It's, I mean, it's, obviously it could be bad. It just depends on the writing, but it could be fun. It does seem like, given who they're hiring to make this, though. They'll definitely want to go big with this and make it a big thing for kids, and you know, cash in that way. I, mean, yeah, the, the, I, I never saw the the Lego Ninjago, but I really enjoyed Lego Batman. The uh, you know the, the live action movies can be your your serious gritty things for the adults, and then this can be for the kids. Yeah, and more realistic, us too, because I'd rather watch this than 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 watch you know Suicide Squad again. <laughs> That's true. But the hope is now at least that maybe the future live action movies will all rank to a place where we'd want to watch them at least. I'd hope. I'm st- I'm, I'm, you know, no, they've, they've had one good movie. Don't do it wrong. The next couple look like they, they could be good. But until until they prove it, that they're, they're still in the they're in the doghouse. Yeah. Also worth mentioning, again, this was there's no concrete info here, but there's rumours that the Flash movie will be shooting in spring. Uh which is a good sign because right now there's like nothing like really hard slated after next year. Like like next year we have Wonder Woman and we have this Joker movie. But once you get to twenty, I mean, there's still I think there's still technically dates that have been announced, but they're all kind of like yeah. When we supposed to be getting like the Green Lantern movie in twenty twenty? Oh yeah, we were supposed to be like like eight movies deep into this <laughs> this universe by now. Um, yeah, but obviously things fell through. So I mean. You know, regardless of what the quality ends up being, and it's a good sign that they're starting to prep things that will come out in twenty twenty, presumably. So that's good because I think it's a real death knell for the whole universe if like they start going years without any movies. Because then it just because honestly, I think it's really weird that there's no Justice League follow up that has even been murmured. Like there's no talk about it at all. There's not. No. It's weird. It's weird. It's really weird. Man yeah. of Steel 2 is just kind of like, yeah, every so often it gets mentioned, but it's not even, nothing concrete. Yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. Uh, it's just to not have any kind of following up. I mean, I, I guess if these next batch do well, they'll start to consider like greenlighting more things again, but it's just it's, yeah. it's bizarre. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, I will say I'm, I'm glad specifically that, that The Flash is moving ahead because that one in particular has felt like it's not really going to happen with the amount of changes it's had. Hmm. Yeah, the the amount of stuff it's gone through into writers, directors, it it just feels like it, it's never gonna happen. So if it actually starts shooting, that'll be nice. Yeah, I, I I'll be honest, I'd love if they recast it, but you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna get that wish. I mean, Ezra Miller just, wasn't uh, wasn't terrible in Justice League by any means, but I I just I, I do think he's miscast. No, no, I agree. I, I think this is where you take the the same route I was saying about you know Batman earlier with with Affleck and just passing it on to Dick is just. Do the one movie, give it to Wally, give I, us a ginger. I think that'd be. <laughs> he won't be ginger in the movie. I <laughs> think. I think what's weird about that though, is that in Justice League they made a point of showing that this was his first time really doing Earth and superhero wise. Like he said, he'd like save some people from fires and stuff, but this was like more serious and bad guys. Like yeah. it, the Barry in Justice League didn't seem like he'd fought like a Reverse Flash or a Captain Cold or anything like that yet. So it'd be no, weird to pass I, I on to Wally already. It, it it would, but I guess you just you just have him go out and sacrifice, you know, as as Barry does, and be like, oh hey, guess we're going off to Wally now. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. I can hope though. 
don't anyway. know why, because it's PC. But... Let's move on to the rest of the news then. Ben Affleck is attached to direct, and Matt Damon's attached to star, so he's directing his... I know what this is, and I'm excited. He's directing his bow. Uh, so this is a true crime story written by Jeff Meish, uh published by the, this is an article that was published by the Daily Beast several years ago about an ex-cop who rigged the McDonald's Monopoly game allegedly stealing over 24 million dollars and sharing it with an unsavory group of co-conspirators who offered kickbacks to the mastermind <laughs> yeah this is you know the, the McDonald's Monopoly that they do every year from like 99 for like a decade or whatever it was um, every single major prize was went to him and and the, and the people who he, he was setting them up for. Interesting. Well, um, so that's just what I've got. The article opens in 2001 in Rhode Island as a million dollar check is delivered to a man who said he'd won the one million grand prize after collecting Monopoly pieces attached to food products. Uh, defying the 1 in 250 million odds and modelled after the venerable, venerable board game uh, that uh, the piece says was invented as warning about the destructive natures of greed. Funny enough, given that he's rigging the game, he won every year. Uh, a camera crew was dispatched to hear how the man won and they chronicled the, his series of lies. There were FBI agents closing in on a sting that began to tip about the Uncle Jerry who'd sell stolen game pieces. Solid detective work unearthed Jerry Jacobson, a head of security for a Los Angeles company responsible for generating the game pieces. It led to a wide conspiracy that involved mobsters, uh, psychics, strip club owners, drug traffickers and a family of Mormons who falsely claimed to have won more than $24 million in cash and prizes. This is so... Do you know what? See when the, I saw the headline for this pop up during the week? It said, Monopoly... McDonald's Monopoly, uh, like, you know, scandal movie. I'm like, what? You thought it sounded boring. I was like, what the hell? What, you mean that stupid thing they play where you can win a prize, like, every so often? What? Do you, do you, know, do you know what this... This... this article about you know the, the original article that references you know being mm. written it started circulating again maybe a month three weeks ago and and it was like this is prime for a movie you know when when that started going around you could just you could see it and i don't know if okay someone got wind that this was you know that they were going to make this movie and started talking about it and that's how it got spread or if it just you know how these things spread on the internet and then someone went quick we're doing that like for whatever reason now it actually took off but I'm not surprised at all because it's just it sounds insane I mean I'm not as excited by it but you are but I just I, I, I read the article it was it was so batshit insane are you like, I'm like how is this real I, you know, I, I would love to watch this movie just, just because it sounds incredible yeah I, I'm not completely sold on it but I mean, just, I'm curious about how this was pulled off. I'll, I'll say that. Um, but I think it's funny though that that, that um, uh, Michael Keaton movie about the f- the founder of McDonald's was just like a year or two yeah. ago, and now there's like this scandal about the Monopoly game. I'm just, I'm like, I wonder if just the heads of McDonald's is like, oh my god, like, uh, are they hating this because like, it's bad publicity? Because all, because these, these are all negative focused movies. It's not like, it, yeah. And I know they say that all you know bad publicity is good publicity. You know any publicity is good publicity. But yeah. I feel like these movies. When are, you're at the level that McDonald's yeah. is, I feel like these movies. I didn't see the founder. I heard good things about it, but you know that was about how someone conned someone else out of the company, and then this is about someone. No, this is not directly reflected on them, admittedly. Uh, but still, just a lot of negativity. Do you, know what? Here, do you know what? Here's the thing. I don't. I don't think anyone gives a shit. I don't think anyone is seeing these movies and going, oh, I'm not eating a McDonald's anymore. That's true. I don't think that changes how they feel in the boardroom, though. I I think it's just as much as as image as it is about the hard line. Maybe. I I, I don't really think they impact the image that much. I mean, maybe the founder slightly, but again, it was about a specific man, not about McDonald's as a whole, really. And it's the same with this one here. This, This might impact the Monopoly game, but I doubt it because everyone knows that okay, it's all bullshit anyway, right? The best you can really hope for is getting the free food. Aye, I'm just like I'm not saying it has any lasting effect. I'm just saying that when this sort of stuff is announced, I can just see some executives in a boardroom going, "Oh, not again!" Like you know, it, it depends. If you go back to Super Size Me, the documentary, 
right? If anything, that yeah, one. See, pro- that was a bit different. Yeah. Though. If anything, that one probably affected them more than these two did, or well. Yeah. See, I think that one's different because that is directly about McDonald's, whereas this is, oh, someone scammed the system, and the founder was, oh, that guy was a oh. dick. Whereas Super Size Me was directly about, you know, McDonald's, the the, the food, the company. So I think that one, that one, they they're concerned about, or were. Probably not. Even, I mean, I just, even I, now, people still talk about it. I just think they're in a boardroom somewhere, sitting, going, "Can someone make a positive movie with us in it, please?" Somewhere. I, I, yeah, it's it's called product placement. They do it all the time. <laughs> could so could someone make a movie about the, the, the you know Ronald the hero, Ronald McDonald, to to save children? I am shocked that they have never like bankrolled an animated Ronald McDonald movie. They've done a video game. Yeah, I know. Which is why I'm sure they never did an animated movie. Ah, it'll happen eventually. It'll happen. No, it will. Eventually, it will happen. And then Burger King will do that 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 thief looking dude, which is not really used in a long time, I don't think. But I remember that being a thing when I was a kid. Yeah. They had their own characters, but that kind of went away. Whereas McDonald's have kind of kept Ronald McDonald around forever. I I don't think they do at the minute. I think they 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 started phasing them out like like two or three years ago. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, because you don't see it anymore. I don't really find myself on McDonald's very often, so I mean, I, I don't keep up to date with That's what's fair. happening. Um, I, I know uh, Burger King has a great social media team. They were like, like just today, this morning, I saw them going, "Hey, this gets a thousand retweets. We'll pick one of our restaurants and they'll play uh, uh, Africa by Toto on repeat all day." I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, you you know people are going to retweet for that. Well, it's just funny because they franchise out, and I I love the idea of the manager at that store getting a call from the head the head office saying, "Hey, by the way, for the rest of the day, you're playing Total Africa on repeat." He's like, "Why? That's stupid." Oh, as a social media team, they they put like a a a bet up on on Twitter. You have to do it now. Your store was picked. Yeah, I I, I saw that early this morning, and it was at like nine hundred something retweets. So. I got there pretty quick, I'm certain, after I saw it. I've got a sense of humour. I've got a sense of humour. Yeah. Didn't they do, like, a really... They had a really good video last year, I think, about bullying. Is that them? Yeah, it was set in, like, a Burger King store where there was, like, Mm. actors bullying some other actor, and it was, like, okay, how many people intervened, and it sort of, like, examined how to intervene and how to handle this, or something like that. I can't remember the exact details, but... Yeah, no, I I don't don't think I ever watched it, but I I, do remember that being a thing. And I remember seeing that and going, this is actually a really well-done little video, this little info piece, and I'm like, why why are Burger King making this? (laughs) What are they doing with the time? Burger King cares. They they sell Whoppers. What's happening? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm more of a, a double cheeseburger man myself. I don't know, but you know. I'm out. I'm out. Whopper's good. Not that I have them very often. I, I try to avoid eating too much fast food, but I eat way too much because I'm I'm an awful person. You and also I just don't you care also, about my health. You also work at a place that's surrounded by fast food joints. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I mean, when I was in university and I had to go places for lunch, and I was in the city centre, and I was surrounded by fast food places. I was eating a lot more fast food because it was just easy. It was there for lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I have no ability to resist. Basically, if it's there, I'm gonna eat it. No, I get that. I get that. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, see so you know how last week uh, Netflix bought Mowgli from from Warner Brothers, and it was like, yeah. oh, poor Andy Serkis, he made all this. You know this this movie. He spent all this time, years doing this, and we were all joking. Who needs a second Jungle Book movie? Well, Netflix have just went and bought the next thing he's doing. <laughs> um, Netflix has doubled down on Andy Serkis and have acquired the rights to the George Orwell novel Animal Farm. Serkis is going to direct the film. It is going to be a performance-captured film, uh, mainly because it's all animals. Uh, Matt Reeves is producing it, which is interesting because he, of course, directed uh, the Apes movies, Yep. which Serkis played the lead character via motion capture. Uh, so Or- Orwell's allegorical novella was published in 1945 and the author said it was informed by the Russian Revolution of 1917 and the subsequent Stalinist regime of the Soviet Union. The premise involves a group of animals who rebel against the humans who own their farm and win their independence. The architects of the revolution create a utopian environment based on equality. That, But a pig named Napoleon 
twist the original intent, slowly eliminates his rivals and enacts seven commandments, the basic of which declares that all animals are created equal, but some animals are more equal than others. I'm I'm trying yeah, I'm to I'm, I'm trying to imagine this this motion captured animal movie, with the, with them doing a a revolt and gaining independence, only to be betrayed from within by greed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, classic story. Obviously, um, it's it's unfortunately timeless, um, but I feel bad for for Andy Circus. The the poor bastard can't get away from mocap, can he? <laughs> you can't. You don't get to see his face. He'll be, he'll be playing like a pig in this one. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll definitely it. be playing but, something. Yeah, he'll definitely. So, so what you part. do, you have him play all of them. <laughs> that's 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 the only way he can win an Oscar. <sighs> I don't even. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm not super. I mean, I've heard of the story. I'm not super familiar with it though. It's uh, it's one of those things you hear about, but I've never read it or. You know, I, I know it's, it in school. No, no, it's one of those things where it just depends what your skill picks for the for the right. course. You know, um, I don't know what else yeah. we did instead, and I don't know if we had like a a satirical, you know, political book instead. Yeah. But, nah. but, uh, we, we we read it in school. I I think schools either do that or they might do nineteen eighty four or they might do, you know, there's a few that they might pick yeah. in that kind of genre. No, no, it's true. Uh, what did we, do? Nah, we did some different we did some like different not not uh, weirder picks I think we did The Woman in Black which was an okay book really? yeah we did The Woman in Black in English um, and I, I remember like seeing the movie and just thinking the movie was garbage it, it just it completely neutered the ending I was like what the hell are you doing <laughs> sounds like movie adaptations to me uh, okay yeah, it kind of does unfortunately uh, and that stupid Daniel Radcliffe pretending to be an adult in that movie really really didn't work for me because keep in mind this was like a year after the last Harry Potter movie right and in this movie he's got like a five year old son and I'm like nah like I'm not bad this just feels wrong it feels weird <laughs> I mean sure he he, yeah, technically, he can technically have a kid that age don't get me wrong I'm not saying he was actually no, too do, old for do you know it, what it but... is you get people like uh, Clay Moretz, right who's doing the transitionary stuff right yes the, the in between where he didn't do the transition he went from right I'm playing a teenager to right, I'm, I'm an adult now. He didn't do the stuff in the middle for people to adjust. Yeah, I mean that wasn't the main, movie's main problem. It was just badly directed and uh, random scares with no justification that just kind of felt cheap. But I digress. Um, so yeah, Animal Farm is uh, getting made by Netflix. So look out for that. Uh, probably quite a big budget film for Netflix. I feel like if it's you know all motion capture animals. I think it has to be. I mean. I don't think Circus could direct a motion capture thing and have them look bad. That, yeah. That's that's his thing, and there's no way he doesn't do it well. So it'll be interesting. So, yeah. Next up, uh, the Russos um, have closed the deal for John Bracato's original prehistoric pitch, The Last Neanderthal. Uh, the film will be shot primarily with motion capture technology. Another motion capture film. They're not directing this, I don't think, by the way. This is just... Um, Producing. Producing. The director is going to be uh, Terry Notary, uh, who's a stunt coordinator and a movement coach who is best known for his motion capture performances in Avatar, The Hobbit, and The Planet of the Apes. So, this is someone who's... Yeah, for some reason, I th- did he do Kong as well? He may have done Kong. I mean, that's just a theater. The, the name sounds familiar, yeah. and I feel like Matt told me, oh, that's the guy that did Kong, like, five times. He would know. <laughs> Yeah, he would know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. He would. Um, but yeah, yeah, so he's doing directorial debut. It, it feels like a very Andy Serkis kind of thing where he's he's been doing a lot of motion capture, so now he's going to do like a motion capture movie. Uh, the Last Neanderthal is an epic adventure and powerful drama, a tale of survival, revenge, and redemption that draws on recent discoveries to depict a prehistoric tale. That doesn't really tell me what the plot is per se and what the Neanderthal man is doing, but yeah, so motion capture presumably to so they can make him look actually you know, different than Neanderthal. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. I mean, we, we, we know the technology's there to do that well enough now. Yeah. So, this will be for it. Neanderthals what Jurassic Park was for dinosaurs. Oh, this is what Neanderthals really look like. Oh. <laughs> but it not actually be how they really look like and then like 10 years later science like, no, no, they had feathers. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they've gone back on that now. They didn't. 
Oh, come on. Pick a side. Yeah, God damn it. I know. I'm sick, I'm sick of this back and forth. It, at least tell me the, the whole Velociraptors were actually more turkey size. It's still true. As, as far as I know. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're much bigger I than the movie. I haven't seen a correction on that one. Right. Well, that's the thing though. Skeletons don't change sizes, so I'm pretty sure they've been they've been consistent with that. That is, that is a good point. Unless unless it turns out you are missing half the skeleton, you just condensed it. <laughs> True. Like, oh shit! There's there's more of this than we thought. Next up, Jessica Chastain's Freckle Films. That's because she's ginger, isn't it? Freckle Films. Probably. I don't approve of that. Uh, Matt, te- Matt teaming up with Voltage Pictures to produce Eve, a film called Eve. Uh, not to be confused with the cheesy sci-fi movie called Eve of Destruction, which I may or may not own, own on Blu-ray. Uh, it's a character-driven actioner uh, that the two-time Oscar nominee will star in, so she's going to be in this as well. Uh, Matthew Newton will write the script and direct, and the plot has been kept under wraps. But it's an action movie starring Jessica Chastain called Eve. So. Should we tell Matt, or should we just let him find out on his own? <laughs> I mean, we don't have a lot to tell him yet. I mean, she's going to be in a movie. No, but that's enough to get him excited. He knows she's going to be in more movies. Yeah, but how often does she do action movies, to be fair? That's true. That's going to be something different for her. She's starting to branch out. Um, maybe she'll start doing more... She'll, she'll, she'll be but doing the, the she, superhero movies in a couple of years time no, this is it. she's had she's had two nominations she's like it's just not doing it for me and yeah you know, I, I need to get the win you know you know how they, you know for when when that happens to the actors they have to do something different to get the win right you can't just do the same thing again you don't get nomination or oscar wins for action movies though no no you don't but maybe, maybe she's just she's, she's just got it wrong for whatever reason she's trying and it's just gonna fail mm-hmm okay okay all right, so moving on. Paul Feig is attached to direct, um, and yeah, so he's attached to direct. Uh, Fox have picked up this film uh, based on a on an illustrated kids book. It's called The Sweetest Fig. Have you ever heard of this? Can't say I have. Uh, that was fine. Uh, it's by Chris Van Alsberg, uh, whose works have previously been transformed into Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle, as well as Polar Express. Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle was an illustrated thing first. That's interesting. News to me. It's because it's a sequel. It's just, you know, surprising. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If you tell me that, then sure. Uh, Published in 1993, the story takes place in Paris and focuses on uh, Monsieur Bibo. It's B-I-B-O-T, but it's French, so I'm assuming Bibo. Mm. It's not the right kind of Bibo. It's not. It's it's not uh, our one true blue god Bibo. It's not. What are you going to do? He's a wealthy dentist who lives alone in a fancy apartment with his dog, Marcel, whom he often mistreats. After Bebo removes the rotting tooth of an impoverished, sorry, impoverished uh, old woman with a pair of pliers and no Novocaine, he becomes enraged when she doesn't have the cash to pay him. Instead, she gives him two figs, which she claims will make his dreams come true. He scoffs at her, but after eating one at midnight as a midnight snack, he finds his dream did come true, and he is actually walking his dog in his underwear, and the Eiffel Tower has dropped to one side, or drooped to one side, rather. The dentist sets himself to do a better job before eating the second fig, plotting to become Francie's wealthiest man, but after his dog gobbles down the fig as it sits on the table, the dentist awakens the next morning un- under his bed. He has taken the form of his dog and realises that the fig-eating Marcel's dream has come true. He has gotten revenge on his cruel master by taking over his body, and the former dentist turned dog can only bark when he's lashed out for or leashed out for his daily walk. So, <laughs> the dog. So man's a dick. Man becomes dog. Dog becomes man and relishes in the fact that they've switched places. Yeah, sounds about right. Does he get intelligent when he when the dog becomes the man? Does he get the intelligence well, to go l- with l- it? That's the thing because clearly the man still knows he's a man and, and has all his thoughts in the body of the dog. But it's, it mentions he's been leashed up to be taken out for walks. I feel like a dog in a man's body wouldn't do that if he only had the brain of a dog. Yeah, but is it just well he knows he was taken out for walks. He knows he was leashed to do that, and he hated it, so he just did that. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm overthinking this, to be honest. Probably. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Paul Feig, so I'm not 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 super excited. I, I thought I thought the plot was at least a little bit interesting. <laughs> well, 
What are you looking up? Sorry, I lost all my sound. Okay, all right. <laughs> I thought you were ignoring me looking up something to come back with a no, fact. No, no. I, I was trying to fix it so I could hear whatever you were saying. All right, that's fine. So I, I oh, missed I'm whatever gonna... I should be repeating. Oh, that's fine. No, well, we can move on. It's fine. Uh, all right, next up, Anna Purna, Anna, sorry, Anna Purna's movie uh, about disgraced Fox News mogul Roger Ailes. Uh, is that how you say his name? A I L E S. Uh, I thought it was just Ailes, but Ailes, maybe yeah. just Ailes, yeah. Roger Ailes. Uh, so it's called Fair and Balanced, and it's adding Nicole Kidman to play former news anchor Gretchen Carlson opposite Charlie Theron's uh, host Megan Kelly. So you got a bit of a cast there. Um, and they've also said that Margot Robbie is in talks to join the film um, as a fictional Fox News associate producer named uh, Kayla uh, Pospizzle Pos, Pos Pospizzle that's a weird name um, so that's a cast Charlie Theron, yeah, uh, Nicole Kidman and Margot Robbie uh, Ailes launched Carlson and Kelly's careers as anchors on the must-see conservative leading network must-see is a bit of a debatable term uh <laughs> where, what where did you get this from oh this was deadline i guess it's must see because it's like a car wreck you have to watch it and just see how yeah it could be yeah. you know just analyze the the stupidity and understand the, the propaganda that's been fed out to the world i don't know anyway uh, before his death two years ago ailes uh, who earlier in his career was a former media consultant for presidents richard nixon ronald reagan and george hw bush resigned amid sexual harassment allegations with carlson and kelly being the most prolific so yeah. Cool. Mm. It must be interesting. I mean, obviously, it's not the first time it's happened, but it must be interesting. A movie being made about something you were involved in when it was just when it's so recent. It's in the last couple of years, and now you know these these anchors are like seeing Nicole Kidman and Charlie Theron cast as them what playing them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one thing. No, it's when got, it's, it's got be... You know, when it's thirty years later and you're old, and it's like, oh, they're, they're, now now there's like people who were like kids when I was doing that. But these are these are women who are presumably the same age or around the same age playing them I, I would assume so yeah. yeah so you know it's interesting but um, I mean I'm not super excited about this movie but it's a hell of a cast I can't I can't say that <laughs> it is if it feels like Oscar baity sort of thing right it does like, I, I you can, can see this this hit in that market that time of year I see the nominations rolling in I do see it yeah I do see it as long as, long yeah. as the, the the script and direction are serviceable at least I feel like these ladies will all put on a performance, and they'll yeah, I feel get like nominated. this is this is probably guaranteed at least some acting nominations, yeah. if not more, depending on the quality of the rest of the movie. All right. Uh, next up, 20th Century Fox is an early development for a prequel to the 1993 cult classic The Sandlot, uh, with David Mickey Evans, the original writer and director, attached to co-write the script with Austin Reynolds. Uh, plot is being kept under wraps, but there's a a buzz that it might revolve around the legend of the beast uh, from its first iteration which I get because I've seen the movie <laughs> well, I assume you haven't no the original was set in 1962 the coming of age comedy centred on Scotty Smalls who after moving to a new neighbourhood befriends a group of boys who play baseball on the sandlot and get into a series of touching adventures most notably um, he ends up stealing his dad's signed uh, Babe Ruth baseball I think it was Babe yeah. Ruth yeah, I think it was Babe Ruth. Uh, and sounds about right. But there's this where they play baseball. There's like there's like a, a yard um, for this old man who's got a, a big dog in it, which they call the Beast because he's so big and scary. Um, I think and, I think I have seen this. And one of them uh, hits a home run. In fact, it's small, so he hits the home run. And the ba- the same baseball goes into the because basically they say, oh, any ball that goes in there is now off limits. Like you've lost that ball to the Beast. And you know, it overplayed. You know, they, they tell all these stories about how awful the beast is, and it's just a big dog. It's fine, <laughs> but I, I like the movie a lot. Actually, I've got it in Blu-ray. Uh, it's one of those movies I watched growing up, and um, it's it's a great so, summer movie. I'm fairly sure I have seen this as a kid. You know, when you yeah. when you're talking about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I've seen this, but I mean, I couldn't tell you much about it. Clearly, interestingly, the um, the 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 catcher. Um, on the team it was a very recognisable kid from 90s kids movies he was also in the big green which was the football one or the soccer one um, him as an adult actually popped up on this last season of Glow um, in a small role and he was instantly did, recognisable did you recognise him? yeah instantly really? right away he has such a distinct look and it's weird to say that he's not aged a day since he was 12 but honestly I mean he's he's taller but he looks it's him 
You cannot mistake him. Okay. But no, I was. I thought I'd mention that since the movie came up. It's just because it's me and Matt were just talking about it on Glow and the, the review. Yeah, yeah. Last well, week. While we're on it. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I like the original movie. I mean, it's a random ass movie to do a sequel or a prequel to, but. Um... Do you know? I, I saw this earlier and someone said there was already three of them. Like, there, there was already, like, two sequels. And I was uh... like, is there? It put direct video, I assume. Yeah, I, I assume so. Yeah, I, I was assume, like, wait, there's more than one of these? Yeah, I assume direct video stuff that most of us have never noticed existed. But yeah. that's fair enough. Um, I, yeah. No, oh, no, no, I, I, like I did think, I was like, this, this, this is not what I'd have expected to get a prequel. I don't or... know if like I'd be excited for a new one, but I do like the original movie. And, you know, I, I bought it in Blu-ray maybe five years ago now. And I remember, yeah, I remember watching it again. Like, oh, it's, like, I have fun revisiting this. You know, it's likable kid characters. It's, I feel like ki- movies with kids in it now suffer. Um, obviously, we're kind of getting back to a better place now. It's, things like Stranger Things are making it a bit better. It's like, okay, this, remember kids with attitude that weren't annoying. Like, and bring that back in some capacity. That'd be nice. Yeah, Stranger Things, it. You know, it's become a bit of a trend uh, yeah, over the yeah. last few years, right? It's like they realised, hey, we want our kids to sound a little bit smarter than kids actually are because, you know it's annoying because it's more enjoyable to watch and then and then you're not getting annoyed by them like you do with actual kids yes and also kids will swear a little bit and they will you know they'll be kids but anyway Uh, so that's a Sandlot uh, prequel next up Mel Gibson and Colin Farrell are going to star in a film called War Pigs Millennium Films are doing it Uh, Tommy Wercola will direct it is written by Nick Ball and John Niven. The project first got set up as The Takedown, so it's had a title change since it first uh, was envisioned. A group of disillusioned ex-Marines go on one last mission to get revenge on the cartel that murdered one of their own while making off with millions of dollars in drug money. I mean, the plot's I'm pretty good. generic sounding, but, I mean, you know. Yeah, it's reasonable casting, don't get me wrong. Yeah? Um, but, uh, no, it doesn't sound like it's for me. I mean, I like action movies, but I mean, Marines and Cartel are not the the buzzwords that I like to hear in an action movie. That doesn't mean I won't like it. I mean, it depends on the tone and what they're going for, but yeah. description alone doesn't do it for me. Uh, next up, Sony Pictures is developing a remake to the 1987 Bruce Willis starring comedy Blind Date. Uh, and it's got writers uh, Chris, Hazard and, or sorry, Chris Hazard and Michael Fontana to write the script uh, and it'll be a more modern take in the world of Dayton uh, this was Bruce Willis' first big uh, movie this was his first starring role um, one year before Die Hard just, just for perspective um, what's funny it didn't I, take I, him too long did it I brought up Glow well he was on Moonlighting before that I think for a while so he was a TV star I think yeah, yeah. Um, assuming that was before his movie's career I, th- I assume it was but um What's funny, I mentioned Glow a couple of stories back. Uh, there was a, a, I just watched the finale of season two of Glow, and there was a joke because a couple of the characters uh, before they became the wrestlers on the wrestling TV show, they were they were stunt workers. They did stunts and stuff, and they mentioned, oh, there's like a there's a movie like coming up um, that we might get on. I said, yeah, some new guys in it, some some Willis guy, and I just yeah, it was just a, it was a little time Wasn't joke. he a, like a, a bartender before? Oh, before he was an actor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't like that long before, like Die Hard and stuff. I don't think. Oh sure, I don't know how long it was, but yeah, I, I remember hearing that he used to. He was a bartender right up until. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it was... I, I, from whatever for whatever reason in my mind, it stuck that it wasn't that long before Die Hard that he was still doing that. Well, given that his first movie was a year, or his first starring yeah. role was a year before that, like, that makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Man, how far we've come. I mean, I... Comedies like that are the the sort of thing that I understand getting remakes. Because um, comedy changes a little bit over time. It does, it does, and you know, it's like it's it's a premise. Comedy comedy premises are often very simple. Oh yeah, well I'll read you and this it's one. Just about the... the original was directed by Blake Edwards and marked the first lead role for Willis. It followed Bachelor Walter Davis, who set up who set up on a seemingly innocent blind date with his sister in law's cousin Nadia played by Kim Basinger. Uh, as the evening goes on, Nadia begins to drink and her behaviour gets increasingly wild, leading to a disastrous date night. So, simple enough. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you could, I mean, I know they're saying, oh yeah, we're going to do modernise things. 
I feel like you wouldn't even really need to. You just change change the jokes, change the the, the actors, you know, the way they play off each other. They'll, they'll meet on That's Tinder. That's a fine premise. Still, they'll meet on Tinder. That'll be the that'll be the modernization. Probably, of it. yeah. And then it'll just be the date. Simple. Yeah, I, I would assume so. Yeah, but that, that's just something where the the these are the remakes that don't annoy me because yeah, okay, sure, you did you you can have a different comedic take on this twenty thirty years later. Question: Did you had you heard of this before I brought it up? No. Yeah. They don't, no, me neither. But I, I'm just but, saying. But. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, saying though. It's just, it's just to add on to you say you, you don't mind these remakes. Yeah, the ones where you've never even heard of the original movie. Are typically no, no, but it's not easier about, to swallow. Like said, it's, it's, it's just about comedies in general. Like I, I think comedies are much easier to remake because, like I say, simple. Pre- you know, th- this doesn't count comedies that have very, you know, specific like angles on what they're doing. But just when it's a, you know, a basic premise, it's, it's just like okay, sure, you take the idea, and you can remake it because you've got a name whatever you want um but you're essentially just throwing in two new characters and you know and and having a whole set of new jokes that's fine to me it's mm-hmm. kind of what it, you would have been you know 20 years ago just a sequel yeah. but now now that's a remake next up now this is one i wasn't sure you well to put this in the horror section or not because okay it's one of those because the, the well this is the thing the property itself does not necessarily sound much like a horror story, although I did read a couple of comments saying that it could veer into that from time to time, and given who's doing it, it they might go full into that. So Bloomhouse <laughs> are are involved. So Fantasy Island, the ABC TV show, which you, this is the funny thing is you might not even know what Fantasy Island is off the top of your head, but you you've probably heard someone go the plane, the plane. Yeah, you've heard that. Yeah, that's from Fantasy Island. Um, I know that quote from Deep Blue Sea because Samuel L. Jackson references it early on in the movie. Okay, that's where I know that from. Um, but this is this is what it comes from. It comes from Fantasy Island, uh, and they're developing it into a movie. It's Bloomhouse with Sony Pictures. Sony owned the rights to it, so presumably Bloomhouse are the ones who make it. They're just sort of like, "Hey, Sony, give us the give us the rights to do it, and we'll you know you'll make some money off of it." Um, so yeah so it ran from 1977 to 1984 uh, Jeff Wadlow is directing which is not a good sign Jeff Wadlow directed Kick-Ass 2 and the recent Truth or Dare oh boy I did not realise that was the same person nor did I until I checked the name after I watched Truth or Dare and then I got this this extra oh, wave oh that explains a lot I got this extra wave of anger so I'm assuming this is going to be garbage just based on who's directing it but I mean just to speculate with the, the premises so the TV show was created by Gene Levitt um, and Ricardo Montalban 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 thank you uh, played Mr. Rourke right obviously he was Khan from, from Star Trek uh, for anyone who's, who needs a, a, a you know a, a solid footing for where you might know him uh so he's a mysterious overseer of a cryptic island that attracted visitors from all over the globe who could come and live out their fantasies for a price. Um, so I've never seen this show. I, I'm not sure if it's like a magic thing where, you know, they, they someone came and then they went into like a world based on what they asked for and we saw how it played out or if it was something else. Like I'm not, I'm not sure what the show was. I, I have no idea. I did read the one one thing I saw in one of the articles I looked at because I was looking at a few of them to get more of a sense of what the show was. It was kind of hard to like. I got that it was like more of like an anthology because different people were coming to like do things, but yeah. Um, some did say that every so often it would do like a deeper episode that would tackle like a dark subject based on what the person asked for, and I was like, you know what? Even though this is not a horror premise by its nature, I could easily see it becoming one. Yeah, yeah, no, quite easily. So. I don't know. Uh, this, if, if, it feels prime for franchising, doesn't it? It does. So if you if you've seen the original show in the in the comments, please do tell us exactly how the 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 the, the fulfillment of the wishes worked. Um, yeah. The the real question though is, will this be a Bloomhouse presents? Oh right, you know, in the, the same way that Truth or Dare was. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jeff Wadlow's directing again, and they seem to trust him with that 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 title. So yeah. I mean, I even, even though, I mean, I'm shocked they're giving him another movie already when Truth or Dare did not perform well, let's be honest. No, I mean, Bloomhouse are really good at having low budgets so that even their low-performing movies still make a hefty profit. That's kind of their stick. 
and Connor's fixing his audio again, I can tell, because he's not responding to him and he's looking over at the other screen. So let's make fun of him while he can't hear us. He's a ginger menace. <laughs> he's, he's, he's being shifty. <laughs> I can't hear him either. <laughs> he's, he's talking and nothing's happening. This is great. This is I, I've dreamed of this. This is my fantasy island. I said mute Connor. Okay, we're back. He's back. Yeah. No. Whatever was going on, my my usual fix was not working. Clearly, clearly. Um, I cracked some jokes, but that was a, that was a bit. I don't know if you missed much else. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. So I'm assuming garbage based on the director, but I mean, I could see potential in it if it wasn't him though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a fine idea. Yes. So anyway, uh, we'll move on to the actual horror section then. Uh, consider that one abridged because I was unsure if it was falling into that category yeah. or not. Uh, so first up in the horror section, um, so Paramount have snapped up the rights to a, a short horror film called Meet Jimmy, and they're going to you know make it into a feature length uh, with the original Dutch filmmakers David Jan uh, Bronsgeest and Tim Kuhnman uh, are going to be the ones adapted it themselves are going to make the film uh, this was competitive apparently apparently there was other people involved uh, so this was uh, Paramount who had an inst- inside track given the Platinum Dunes had a deal there so Platinum Dunes were involved Paramount just put out a quiet place so I think Paramount because a quiet place did so well are probably like oh we could do more horror films can, can, can we do another one yeah yeah. So Meet Jimmy is a co-production between Platinum Dunes and the Picture Company. Uh, the full details will be kept quiet, but the short revolves. So we don't know what the, the movie officially is going to be about, but presumably it'll be a, a, an expansion of what this is. So the short revolves around a mysterious podcast that once listened to has horrific consequences. Sources compare Meet Jimmy to The Ring and A Nightmare on Elm Street uh, with a zeitgeist hook, is the phrase they're using. We're getting yeah, a ha- I can, I can see, yeah. haunted podcast. That's where we are now. Why haven't we just made one of those? What is? Yeah, we make a haunted podcast, not a movie. Just, just yeah, this is haunted. <laughs> Tim, Tim will figure a way to curse it with a demon. I'm sure so, he knows. Hey, uh, what, whatever audience was asking if we'd ever considered doing a fictional podcast. I was like, I don't know. It's, 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 I'm intrigued by the idea, but I mean, I, I don't know. What's like, something I ever considered? I mean, I like the idea, but I don't know if I like the idea of me just tell oh shit, of us just telling the story. I like the idea of voice actors doing it. Yeah, but you know that t- that, that takes work, and you know at, at that point you're basically making a a, a radio play, you know, full yeah, like, true. audio drama. That's true. I guess you have to write something that kind of it works from just one or two voices. Like you know, it's like do mm. whatever the, the 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 gimmicky concept is that says okay, it's just these one or two people who are telling the story. Yeah. You know, it's, know. It's, we we report on it as if it was like in the news this week, but it, you know, it wasn't really. We we're just making up a fiction, fictitious through yeah. line. Yeah, no, never considered it. I don't know. That's something to think about. But anyway, so this is the thing that's happening. Um. So yeah, uh, Brongist will direct. Sean and Michael uh, Rasmussen, uh, <laughs> or Rasmussen, sorry, will write the script along with the short's original writer Cumin. Uh, the Rasmussen's scripted Crawl, another high concept genre film for Paramount, which is now in production. So they've actually Paramount have already hired them to write another film called Crawl, which sounds like a horror movie, but I'm not familiar with it at this point in time. But uh, so, yeah, mm, but cool. I'm intrigued. Yeah, me too. I'm intrigued. So hey, next up, the Grudge remake. Is that a thing? The last time I brought this up, you actually said the phrase. I, I keep forgetting this is a thing. This is at least the th- <laughs> this is at least the third time I've brought this up. So I, I love that I genuinely have no recollection of that. <laughs> so there's going to be a grudge remake. However, there's a there's a kink. There's a kink now. Uh, Taka Achizi, the original producer uh, of the Japanese grudge franchise titled Juon, has filed a breach of contract lawsuit against Good Universe, who are the company making the new one, because uh, they refused to allow him to produce. 
The claim, which was filed in the LA Superior Court on July 30th, says that Good Universal acquired the rights to develop the next instalment of The Grudge on the condition that Echizzi would be given a producer credit and paid an agreed-upon fee. The suit claims that despite the contract, Good Universal has not given Echizzi a producer credit. So it sounds like, I mean, he can turn it down and say, nah, just go for it, I don't care, I'll, I'll stay him on it, but he, they had to offer him a producer role. And they didn't. I don't know why they just wouldn't. Um, Joe, I, I feel I feel like they had their lawyers look through the contract, and they they interpreted it in a certain way where they thought there was either a loophole they could save some money, or they thought, oh, we can get away with this. This only applies under the circumstance, so they think they're in the right, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that's it. I mean, they're, they're they're presumably saving a little bit of money in whatever his fee was. But in the grand scheme of things, I, I'd assume that wouldn't be that much. In the grand scheme of a movie budget, yeah, not that yeah. much. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, seems, seems weird. But whatever it is, it was a clause that they have apparently failed to live up to. So, depending on how this goes, maybe it'll be cancelled, or maybe they'll just have to, you know, pay them off pay them. even more than they I, originally I think, had to. I think what's <laughs> particularly amusing is Hollywood throws producer credits around like they're nothing. <laughs> that's true like what's what's the bit they, 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 they it feels basically worthless oh, producer credits mm. like, I, I know they're not I know they serve a purpose but for the most part it's like okay from you know the, this person produced this and this it's like yeah but there's no real link there it's just just some money yeah next up the Sopranos star Jamie Lynn Seigler is going to top line a horror film called Hunting Season uh, Seigler is to play Abby, a street smart social worker in the thriller directed by Rebound and Ice Cream Truck director uh, Megan Freels Johnson. How have I not seen the Ice Cream Truck director? Oh, sorry, not director. The Ice Cream Truck. How have I not heard of the Ice Cream Truck? It sounds. I, yeah, I'm like, what is this? I want to know. It sounds amazing. I want to know about it. Uh, she will work. Is, out... is this a horror movie as well? Yeah. The the Ice Cream Truck. I don't know, but I assume so. I hope so. Otherwise, I'm not that interested. She will work alongside Being Human and Knight Rider actress uh, Diana Russo, who plays a desperate single woman named Piper. When Piper goes away for a romantic weekend in a hunting lodge with her dashing new boyfriend James, played by Firefly Sean Mayer. Firefly, you say? That's interesting. Joss Whedon made Firefly. He also did the hit television show Buffer the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, just, just to get roll back a, a slight touch. It didn't happen to say which version of Being Human, did it? No. No, okay, never mind then. Because uh, I've seen the UK version, and I might, I'm, I might be able to you know, put a face to, to the name, but if, but if it's the US one, then I've got no chance. Things don't go to according to plan. Abby must track down her roommate before it's too late. However, she is being chased by a psycho killer in the woods. Or, she's sorry, she's not been chased by a psycho killer in the woods. She's been chased by the 1%. The sentence is kind of worded kind of awkwardly. I, I, see, when I was reading this earlier, when I was first reading this article, I had to read this like three times to understand what the hell it was telling me. Um, so yeah so Bruce David uh, Bruce Davison uh, who's from Insidious and X-Men uh, plays James's father a wealthy hunter whose desires have gone beyond big game so it sounds like he's the one hunting uh, the girlfriend yeah uh, okay I mean I get it it's it's uh, you know a hunt movie but the, the, the gimmick is the guy's rich and he's representing the elite right which I feel like I've seen before. Maybe it's I not. Haven't. It's not a million miles away from something like Hostel or something like you know anything where the rich pay to yeah. kill or uh, do anything that, like that. I mean, honestly, it's be a good movie though. Yeah, I think for this one, it's just based on like how is the direction? That does it have style? Is it tense? Um, or is it schlocky that could also be fun if it's just really schlocky and over the top either one of those could yeah. be fun but there's a lot of stuff in between that would be really tedious so yeah potential though so finally on this week's news show we have um, a film called Killer Kate which Freestyle Digital Media has acquired the, the North American rights to uh, for a release um, on October. It'll open in the select theatres, but will also be available to rent and to own through Freestyle Digital Media. So Killer Kate is the debut film from writer-director Elliot Feld. 
Um, and it stars Danielle Burgess from The Sinner, Tiffany Shepes as from Victor Crowley, which I've seen that actually, and Tales of Halloween, which I've also seen. I can't think of anyone who's in both those movies though. Admittedly, I don't remember either movie particularly fondly, so <laughs> I'm not going to claim to remember all the actors who were in them. Uh, so the story revolves around an estranged uh, pair of sisters, Kate and Angie, who haven't spoken since Angie went to college and left Katie to care for their ailing father. In a show of reconciliation, several years after moving out, Angie invites Kate to her bachelorette party held at a remote house booked on a home-sharing app. A home-sharing app? Oh, I, I didn't know that. Didn't yeah, know that was a it's thing. It's just like Airbnb, isn't it? Ah, oh, fair enough. Okay. This is their, this is their record to me as a home-sharing app. Uh, the women are unaware that by booking this house, they're walking into a trap set in motion by a disturbed family of amateur killers. So, whoever owns this house, just... Or whatever sets it up for, for victims. I am shocked no one has done this already with the, the Airbnb style thing, right? Well, you mean actually in real life try to kill someone by luring them in? No, no, I'm just, I mean, that too. I, I read a great thread on Twitter this week oh, about uh, some guy who, who'd rented it out and it was like, it was supposed to be like four people coming to visit. And, um, but yeah, he, he, he has a the camera on, on the outside. So, you know, when they got there, he checked and there was like 25 of them. And um, he phoned Airbnb, and they were like, "Well, okay, we'll speak to them." And then a the guy said to Airbnb, "It's like, oh, we had a verbal contract. It's fine." And uh, it just like you know, just made this up, and they had to like come and co- like drive back to that this home and, and kick them out. It's a great thread on Twitter. You know, like this this whole whole story it was it it went on far longer than you'd think, with lots of twists and turns. <laughs> okay, was, I'll look forward to the crazy. movie. All right, I'll look forward to the movie. Yeah, yeah, but I'm surprised no one's made a movie about like that concept already because it seems kind of a an obvious easy thing, right? Um, oh yeah, I guess. I mean, how long has it been been a thing? A few years. Yeah, about a few years. I mean, it takes a year or so to make a movie. So, I mean, yeah, but it's been like three or four years at least Airbnb since it's became like pretty big. Yeah, but three or four years is not that long in the movie world, though. Oh, it is in the horror movie world. No, but in terms of like thinking of an idea based on a thing, it's still a relatively new concept. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as they did the news, uh, and that brings us into the show, basically. Uh, so, you know, as always, uh, get us on Twitter, at mail underscore fuzz. Let us know what you thought of the news items in the comments below. And of course, it would be foolish not to try and promote a little bit of Patreon. Patreon.com slash TV. If you go over there, you can support the show, support the channel, everything we do here, uh, get some stuff early, get to vote on some some of the shows in terms of what we review movie-wise, and some various other bits and pieces. Um, but ultimately, you get to support us, and you can support us by doing that over there, even for $1 a month, which is, is super great and super helpful and supportive. Uh, but if you can't do that, don't feel too bad. You can do other things like liking, subscribing, commenting, um, or even as simple as just turning off ad block on YouTube and letting the ads play. It also helps. Yeah. I would say, you know, if if you feel like it, share us around on Twitter. YouTube at the moment is is really burying things, and even even if you have our, our notification bell turned on, you might not be getting our notifications because YouTube's a dick. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, it's getting more eyes on it really helps. Yeah, uh, so you can do any of that stuff to help out. Um, but that is that is that's pretty much us. I feel like I had something else I wanted to say, and it's 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 left me. It's escaped me. I don't know. Maybe maybe tell them what the Patreon vote's going to be for this month. I can't remember what the Patreon vote's going to be for this month. Can Can you remember the theme? I remember the theme for In Flux. The theme is it's four movies from our top nineties countdown that we've not done before. It's four, four of the films that were up high on our, on our countdown. But we established last night that I couldn't remember what the fourth one was, and I've not checked since then. So you actually asking me to do that live on the show is a bit, bit, bit of a dick move, quite frankly. I just assumed you checked by now. <laughs> no, I have not. All right, fine. You can you you can tell them next week. I'll tell them next week. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but you can do that. Also, we're on Spotify now. The audio feeds on Spotify if that's convenient for anyone. Yeah, might be for, for the for the show. Yeah. Um, maybe it isn't I don't know uh, but you, you can share out a Spotify link if you want we should tell you though what's coming up on the channel movie wise in the next week uh, so Influx for patrons 
just got a Godzilla movie. They just got the eleventh Godzilla movie, Godzilla vs. Hedera. Uh, everyone else on YouTube uh, and the audio feed, you got Blood Rain, which is the Yuva Bowl film we did. Uh, that was the, we passed the hundred and fifty dollar goal on Patreon, and our patrons voted for Blood Rain. We hate you all. Uh, basically, yep. is the yep. short the short response to that. That, 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 that was your, your bonus film for the week. Yes, yes. Because uh, we also did Hidden Fortress, which is a Kurosawa film, which was actually the Patreon vote winner for last month. Uh, so we yeah, did those. We, we, we couldn't do two awful films in a row. No, 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 no. Um, well, I mean... In fact, I mean, e- even doing two awful films in a row, I don't think, we, we've never done a movie as bad as Blood Rain, so we could never have done two in a row to that standard. <laughs> well, if we did a second of a ball movie, we may have uh, nailed it. Yeah, but we're, we're never doing that. We're never doing two in a row. I'm making that promise right now. I just got an idea for a goal. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see two in a row, <laughs> um, to quote the merchant from Resident Evil 4, you have to buy it at a high price. Uh, so. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so that that was that was uh, there. Next week on Patreon, the early episode coming up next Friday should be Samurai Two, a uh, duel at Ichi Jojo Temple, I believe is the second one. So uh, we did the first one about a month or so ago, and we'll be doing the second one. Uh, and patrons will get that next Friday. Uh, as far as Screams After Midnight goes, this week you guys got Phantasm Five, which was notable. It's the end of the franchise. It's the final one. It's the one that only came out a couple of years ago. Um, and it was a very depressing conversation. It was like a, it was a really embarrassing movie to watch, and kind of, it, but it hurt more because that franchise is fantastic. It started off with a masterpiece. Two is really really good. Three is still pretty enjoyable. Four is a bit shaky, but four is a, is like night and day. Like five is just uh like. I, f- I feel like you should say the end of the franchise for now because it's a horror franchise. It's not staying dead. That that's a iteration of it is like they may, they might reboot it and remake it, but this this is yeah because this still had the original cast in it from like the original. Yeah, give it give it five years. We'll be doing a oh it, this ignores everything after the first one. No, they can't do that. They'll find a way. No, they can't because the entire thing revolves around the tall man and Angus Grimm's dead. It has to be a reboot. It has to be a complete remake. Okay, right, fine. It just it doesn't lend itself to that type of sequel. Um, Someone will find a way. Not anymore. If they really want to. No, I just told you they can't. It's impossible. It's actually yeah, impossible. impossible. No, it is impossible. I'm telling you, it's impossible. It's definitely not. It is. It's impossible. It's just, gotta, just gotta get creative. Well, tell me then how. I don't know. I've not seen it. I'm just saying it's it's well, possible. Well, sit there and spout too. your bullshit then. Be, be argumentative just for the sake of it I'm telling you it's impossible as someone who's seen all the films just accept it no I think you're too, I think you're too close to it so yeah you got Phantasm 5 and then coming up this week um, on streams there's a there's a foreign film it's actually I won't tell you what the movie is I'll leave it as a surprise but it is from The Crypt which is actually one of the perks that our patrons have is they get to add films to a to-do list called The Crypt and then every so often we pick one from it. Uh, everyone can see the list. If you go to any Screams episode, the link to The Crypt will be in the description, but uh, patrons get to add films to it. Uh, so it had been a little while since we've done one, so there's a, there's a Crypt movie coming this Wednesday, so you can yeah. look forward to that. There was a somewhat bonus this week as well with a, with an archive episode. I don't know if I'd count that as a bonus. For some people it is. I mean, it's not like you couldn't find it already. Well, no, but for for some people, it might be a bonus. It'd be like, oh, hey, look, this is here. Sure, there's some old episodes of streams um, from the old YouTube channel, which I will be migrating over to the new channel. Uh, probably just one per week, so it's not flooding the the place in like old content. But um, yeah, so the invitation, which is a review, me and Tim did uh, mid twenty sixteen, maybe maybe slightly earlier twenty sixteen. Um, so you know, uh, if, you, if you're interested in that, it is worth mentioning. Like the audio quality is not quite as good. Um, there might be references to other content that doesn't exist anymore. So don't you know worry about that. But I mean, the movie—I mean, I can tell you right now, the invitation is a good movie. It's a damn good movie. So if you want to hear us talk about it, you can. Uh, but we're definitely a bit more amateur, I think, in that in that review. It was definitely bugging me as I was like tinkering with it. I was I was doing my my director's remaster of it and putting the new the other the newer overlay over the top of the old one so it look it looks slick at least compared to the the rest of the episodes but 
And that was, you know, you'd been doing doing the show a, a reasonable amount of time at that point. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're much better in that than we were way back at the start of the show. But it wasn't that far into it. That was, like, episode 40-something. How was it? Yeah, and we're up to, like, 250 now. So, I mean, we continuously get better. Well, me and Tim do with you on the I show. Mean, it gets Tim, up... Tim might. I think you'll find that my technique has become much more refined over the last couple of years. Sure, mistakes are made, but mistakes are owned. Oh, are they? Are they? They are, yes. Mistakes are edited out as much as you can help it. Hey, that's that's, that's part of the skill set. What are you talking about? <laughs> sure. Part of the sure. skill set. Um. So, yeah. So, not all episodes will be getting migrated over, but a lot of them will be um, some of the earliest ones will not be because they're pretty shit and I'd rather no, no one watch them to be honest so you know um, <laughs> so, so but some we'll just redo will, those movies one day uh, well we're actually redoing one of them uh, in October oh there you go then we're redoing one uh, I, I said to him a while ago that oh, gradually I want to redo some of the bigger movies that we did in that first like six months or a year whatever it was um, and do them with the, the modern experience that we have gained in, in talking about movies over the last few years um, uh, so one of them's coming in, in, in October um, just in time for a new sequel that may be coming out oh dear. Dear, dear so go on, predict away in fact just to give you an tease, because Tim is busy for a lot of October because he's getting married we have been recording a lot of October's episodes in advance and I just want to let everyone know that me, I had to watch Rob Zombie's Halloween today and then we talked about it. You're going to see that review for a couple of months, but prepare yourself. It's going, to, it's going to be worth the wait. That's what you're saying, right? It's scathing. It's scathing. I I was dropping f bombs left and right during that review. I could not hold back. <laughs> oh my god! Joe, you know I, I love the like, the only two times you have been unable to resist the dropping f bombs in recent memory. Ah. Uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween on one end of the scale, and on the other end, Buffy the Vampire Slayer reboot. Well, well one is one is anger, and then the other is happiness. The, the, the extremes yeah. are the opposite ends of the spectrum. That's what that is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, uh, yeah, so you can look forward to that. That's coming. Uh, yeah. Which means in a couple of weeks, ten minutes, you watch Halloween too by Rob Zombie, which I'm not particularly looking forward to either. Uh, but there you go. Try, try and restrain yourself a little <laughs> on that review. But that's us. Oh, I'm dropping my pen. That's us, guys. So thank you very much once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching the movies. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>